In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you a load of things that I wish I'd known when I first started getting into Mainstage five years ago. This video is therefore a bit longer because I'm assuming no prior knowledge of Mainstage or how to use any kind of digital audio workstations. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing you want to do is go into File and press New. This will bring up this menu which will bring up a load of options for different types of Mainstage concert that you can create. There's quite a range of choices available but we're just going to pick Keyboard Minimalist as this is the simplest to start with. Before you go any further, just make sure you've got your MIDI keyboard connected up to your laptop via USB cable. Otherwise, a lot of the stuff I'm about to show you won't work. I'm just going to hit the red record button so I can record audio for this video. This isn't something you'll have to do, but I'm just telling you so you know what's going on. So now we're going to make sure that our keyboard is assigned. Essentially, this just means that main stage and the keyboard can talk to each other. So we just press a sign and press a note on our keyboard and we should see that the MIDI port option should now show the name of our keyboard or whatever it is for yours. So the next thing to set is the number of keys. My keyboard is 88 keys so I'm just going to set that and I'm also just going to name it Hammer 88. You'll also want to set the lowest key. Press learn and then press the lowest key on your keyboard and it will assign it automatically. So just to show you it's working, I'll just play something. So we're in business. Main stage and the keyboard are talking with each other, which is great. But there's a few other things we'll need to assign on the keyboard, which are fairly fundamental. So make sure your sustain pedal is plugged in and press assign. And then press your sustain pedal down. And this will allow your sustain pedal to communicate with main stage. So you can see for me, it all looks good. There's another two controls on your keyboard that are fairly crucial. These are the mod wheel and the pitch bend. So we'll just assign those as well in a similar fashion by pressing assign and then moving them on the actual controller itself. So that all looks good to me. So I'll just play again. And I might just check out the pitch bend. Yeah, it's working. So the next thing I'm going to do is something that you should always do when you open a new main stage template, and that is to delete these bus sends that it automatically puts in for you. So navigate to the concert level with me, and you can see that they exist here. So the reason I'm so keen to delete them is because they use this plugin called Space Designer, which is really draining on your computer CPU. So if we just select all these auxiliary buses or reverb sends and just hit delete, we're all done. And then for good measure, we can just remove the bus sends on the electric piano patch. And at this point, it's usually a really good idea to save your main stage concert because you've made quite a few significant changes at this point. So if we head up to file and press save as, it will bring up this menu. And I'm just going to save it in the concerts folder. And I'm going to call it tutorial. Then hit save and we'll continue learning about main stage. Another useful tip, if you press command C and then press command V, you can copy and paste and create a copy of the patch. So now hit layout in the top left hand corner and we're going to move into the actual design phase for our main stage template. The first thing I like to turn off is display keyboard layers. I find for me they kind of ruin the aesthetic of the main stage template, but also, and perhaps more importantly, they actually take up space on screen that you can use for other things. Now I'm just going to make this patch list a bit less excessive. I mean, we don't need to display 30 different songs. So what I'm going to do is just make it about 10 and I'm going to drag at the corner of the box and just make it a bit smaller. I'll probably change my mind about this later, but this placement is definitely a lot better than what we had at the start. I'm going to delete the set buttons. These are just for navigating between sets. You might need, want to include these, but for me, I'm just going to make something that allows me to change patch. So if we just move them around just to make it look a bit better, generally speaking, I'm including all of these details just because 
for someone who's never used Mainstage before, it's important to see every step along the way. I'm just going to delete the text at the bottom that says patch as well. So that's a bit more economical in terms of design. Speaking of being economical, that's the general philosophy we're going for here. I'm trying to make sure that when I'm putting these things on screen, they're not, they're not taking up an excessive amount of space. So my next thing that I'm going to try and do is make the piano as small as possible. Well, within reason, of course. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it and try and get it to the bottom left hand corner. Main stage can be a little bit weird at times in terms of the way different objects behave, even interact with one another. But I generally find if you just persevere enough, you can get it to do what you want it to do. So if we drag it down and try and aim for the bottom left hand corner. I'm also going to move the sustain pedal as well. And if we move the bottom line up, we can make the keyboard shorter, which is going to really help us in achieving our goal. And similarly, I'm going to shrink it in the horizontal direction as well. And now I'm just going to drag it into place. I'm also going to make the mod wheel and the pitch bend controls a bit smaller as well. This is just kind of an aesthetic thing. I'm just trying to make them align nicely with the keyboard by moving the crosshairs at the edge of them. So if I just select all parts of the keyboard, then I can move them to the bottom left. Now I'm going to move the sustain pedal along. But actually, I don't want the foot switch and sustain pedal. So what I'm going to do is go down to the menu below and just find the individual sustain pedal object. You might also have a foot switch, but I don't. So I'm just going to do it for sustain pedal today. So I'm just going to make this nice and small as well. And if you remember back to the start of the video, we'll need to assign it again. So you can see how the settings on the sustain pedal just changed. So we've reassigned our sustain pedal and everything seems to be working as it should. I'm just going to do some more cosmetic things. I'm just going to delete these title things. So that's better, so it gives us a bit more space. So it's becoming more and more of a canvas for us to create on now, rather than just being something we've been given to work with. So in the next stage in the design, we're going to create the knobs and faders and sliders and all these sort of things that will allow us to control the different keyboard parameters. I'm just using a Korg Nano Control 2 to do this, but you might have a hardware keyboard that has faders and knobs already on it. So you can just apply the concepts I'm about to show to your keyboard. So the first control I'm looking for is the vertical fader. But while I'm on, I'm just going to adjust the patch list a bit. I'm going to turn it to, yeah, I'll just leave it on patches and sets. You can see there's a few options that might suit your taste. I'm going to reduce the number of items as well. You can also change the color as well. I quite like light blue, so I'm going to stick with this as the color for most of the objects. And you can also change the title up top as well. I'm now going to move this bit to the top right because I've just realized I want to use the bottom left hand space for all these faders and controls. So I'm quite happy now with the positioning of this. So I think we'll crack on. Onto the faders now. I'm just going to pop it over here and hit assign. And then I'm going to move one of the faders on my Korg Nano Control 2. And similar to before, it should assign. And I'm going to change the color. I'm now just going to make the fader nice and narrow. This is because I want to get eight of these on and still give myself enough space to put other things in the template later. I'm now going to create a background. 
this is kind of a cosmetic thing, but it will probably help us when we're playing just so we can see where the different controls are grouped. So if we just pop the background behind the faders and drag it out a bit, I'll inevitably make quite a few changes as we go, but I'm just talking through what I'm doing. I'm dragging the fader over a bit. If you want to stick buttons on for other things like either left or right of the faders, you might want to do this, but I'm probably not going to do this. So I think that I'll probably end up making this smaller eventually. That might be something for a subsequent tutorial. So you can see I'm making the box quite small. I'm just going to try and stick two faders together. I'm positioning the faders in the bottom left hand corner. You can also then add a knob. This mimics what's on the Nano Control 2. And just positioning the knob and changing the color of it. To assign it, we press the assign like we've done before and move the physical controller itself. So now I'm just going to reassign the controllers just to make sure it's all working. You'll notice that the number has changed from 24 to 25 when I assign the second hardware fader. The reason for this is because when I copied the first fader, it kept the assignment. So now the faders should be assigned to fader 1 and fader 2 on my hardware my Nano Control 2. So if we move the first knob on our hardware controller, you'll notice I made a mistake. And this is because you can see that the second knob also moved. But that's because they still have the same assignment because I copied them, which is the thing I was just saying about with the faders. So I just need to address that. I'm also just fixing some of the cosmetic issues as we go. You might have noticed that the parameter values were overlapping with the faders. So I want to try and avoid this so it's possible to see what the controller is saying when I'm playing live. The way I'm doing this is just by making the actual box with these faders in a bit bigger and just moving them around. Sometimes, as I said earlier, mainstays can be a bit fiddly with this stuff, but you just kind of have to be a bit creative and persevere with it. And just double checking the assignment, I'm going to assign the second knob and you can see now it's changed to knob two. This is really crucial to make sure that you've actually got the correct assignments when you're trying to do, I don't know, 20 or different controls. It's very easy to have the fader on your hardware not mapped correctly. So you move it and it does something unexpected on the screen. I've just selected all the controls and what I've done is I've just grouped them. And this allows me to move it around just like the way I've shown you just. And this is really useful because then we can just do copy paste. I sped the video up a lot and just repeated the procedures I've just spoke about. So I'm just assigning a load of stuff. So you can see they all have different assignments, the faders 24 through to 31, and all the knobs are different as well in terms of their assignment. So you can see it goes from 16 to 23 in terms of like the MIDI CC values, which we won't get into that, but effectively they all have a unique assignment. The first thing we're going to do is just assign one of the faders, you can see me doing it here, to the volume of the classic electric piano. So you just click map parameter and click on the volume fader for the classic electric piano and you should see like on screen that you can control the volume with the fader. You can just see me doing it right now. So the last thing I'm going to show you how to do is to use a knob to control a parameter. So the parameter I'm going to control is the cutoff for an EQ on this electric piano. So what it will do is it will make the sound a lot more mellow. And this is something that we could control in real time using the hardware knob to control the software.
So we just hit map parameter and then click on the parameter. And what I'm going to do is set the range minimum to be about 300 hertz. And to make this effect a bit more noticeable, I'm going to actually make the electric piano a bit more high frequency by increasing the time bell. If you're a bit new to main stage, don't worry about this too much, but just explaining what I'm doing. So you can see the filters down right now. And as I play, it's a lot more mellow. So the last thing I'm going to do is just add a title for the concert. So I'm just going to find the text object. And I'm going to move it to the top left hand corner. I'm just going to call it tutorial template. And if we select the text and then we press font, we can make it a lot bigger. Obviously not 288, but you might want that. I don't know, but um, just make it as say, suitable size for your template and then drag it to wherever you want. I hope that's been really helpful if you're new to main stage. Feel free to leave any questions down in the comments you might have about anything I've done that wasn't clear. With that said, have a great day and God bless.